Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, and taking care of yourself out there. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. I make tutorial videos here every week on YouTube showing you how I take photos from wherever they are to wherever I want them to be. And that's exactly what this episode, if you will, is about. I am taking, in five minutes or less, yes, I'm timing myself, in five minutes or less, I'm gonna take a photo that I like, the place and location, but it was just, like time of day, just that, right? Nothing was really exciting or interesting about it. So I wanna see, I kinda of challenged myself. I sat down this morning and I started playing with this photo and I was like, I wanna see what I can do and I don't wanna like mess around. I just wanna like get in there and just hammer it um, and in a short amount of time come up with something very different, very, to me, interesting, maybe beautiful. Is it real? No. <laughs> I'm not a photojournalist. This is not what I saw. That's gonna be painfully obvious, but it's fun and I wanna be clear. I'm not saying you need to hurry when you edit your photos. In fact, if you wanna take your sweet old time, you take your sweet old time, do what you need to do. I'm usually not in a hurry. I, however, just wanted to kind of challenge myself to say, you know, Luminar's got all this power. I'm in Luminar 4, by the way. I don't know if I said that. Luminar has all this power, and you know, I can do so many things with a photo, and I just wanted to jump in and see if I can quickly come up with something that's different and fun and unique. So, here's my photo unedited other than a crop. That's in the Schweinstein Castle in Bavaria, southern Germany. I gotta get my little timer here because I am actually gonna time this. Um, so I, I was playing around with a photo and I was like, I'm just gonna do something different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start my little timer. I'm gonna put five minutes on that timer and I'm gonna show you that and then we're gonna edit this photo. So I'm gonna hit start and boom, it's going. All right, the first thing I knew I wanted to do is get a sky replacement load custom sky. I've got this storm chasing tin, which I'm gonna stick on the photo. And by the way, this is one of the skies that comes in the Luminar X membership this month. I got it just uh, the other day. I love it. I think it's amazing. It fits, it's good. I'm ready to go. So I'm going straight over to light. The first thing I notice is, and this is a common thing I do, is I wanna start with contrast. I gotta check my notes a little bit. I uh, do that, I'm pulling down highlights 100. I'm pulling down whites 100 and blacks I'm pulling down about 25, 26, 27, something like that. So that's good. Now I wanna add some AI structure because what I wanna do is bring up a little bit of the detail and the crunch, but I don't want it on the whole photo. So I'm gonna gradient mask that, and that is going like that, basically on the bottom of the photo. Now the thing I like about this sky is that it's incredibly beautiful, but those colors do not match at all. And I actually decided this time, I'm gonna make it a black and white. It's one click, there's my monochrome. I think it's looking pretty sweet. I am gonna move on to medium details. That's about a 24 or so. And once again, I'm gonna do a gradient mask. I just wanna bring up some of those details in that lower part of the photo. I think you can get away with a little bit crunchier detail in a black and white than you can in a uh, color colorful photo, um, personal opinion. Um, I like dehaze here. I think it cuts through a little bit of that stuff in the sky. And I went to about a 37. I think we've made a lot of progress. I mean, my friends, this has been a minute and a half. I got all kinds of time. I'm like coasting now. Um, it's been a minute and a half and I've done that. That's the power and the fun of Luminar. I'm not done though. I'm gonna go over here and get dramatic and I gotta check. I went about 20 here and I went for a global approach to that. So I just stuck that dramatic across the entire photo. Let's be honest, I'm making this up as you know and it's a dramatic photo. When you have a castle on a mountain with lightning strikes uh, coming in behind it, that's dramatic. It calls for it. I'm moving on to mystical and I'm going fast and that's because I'm timing myself. It's kind of like a race, but like I said, I don't necessarily recommend that you race through your editing when you're really comfortable with a lot of the tools and what they can do. I think you'll find that you naturally can speed through things a little bit more. It's not the goal. The goal, it's not a race, right? Take your time, do what you want. I'm just having fun here. Um, I do like soft focus bright. It's a wonderful filter because I'm gonna go at about 13 or so. And you see how that really pops the lightning strike? One more time, there it is before and after. And I like that. I mean, it brightens it up, it softens it, but it really pops that. And I think that looks natural with a lightning strike. Again, fake lightning strike. You know, we're all friends here, so you're not gonna judge me or tell me it's terrible. But um, I'm gonna move to Orton, give that about a 20 or so. So 19, 20, I just like to add that. And I'm at three minutes. I gotta wrap this thing up, put a bow on it. Um, and I'm getting close, my friend. So you can set orientation here in adjustable gradient. 
I actually like how it's divided. I might lift that a tiny bit just to get a little bit closer to the horizon, but it's not really bugging me. I'm gonna do a little bit of contrast in the top. I'm gonna do about a 10, and highlights, I'm actually gonna lift them about a 20. That's again, another attempt to kind of pop that lightning a little bit. And then over on the bottom, I've gotta check my notes. I'm doing contrast, just a minor contrast, like seven or eight. And here, I'm gonna pull the highlights down just a tiny bit, like three or four. All I'm trying to do is, in the beginning, let me show you the before, uh, the, you know, it was daylight, right? So I'm, I'm totally faking it with the sky here. And I, I don't know how natural it looks. And it's okay if it doesn't look natural. Not really the point. The point is have fun, be creative, and challenge yourself to do different things. But I wanted to take down the brightness level of the castle. I got one minute left. I got to hurry up and keep talking and finish. Um, I'm kind of like twitchy here. I'm nervous. I'm not going to make it. But anyway, there it is before and there it is after. Just wanted to tone down some of the brighter parts of the castle. And I'm on to my last little uh, trick here, and I'm going to about a nine or 10, but I'm taking this hue. I'm on photo filter, as you can see, to like 233. That's a great way to add kind of a silvery kind of look. And by the way, I'm at 420. Can you see that, my friends? 420 and, well, almost four and a half. I made it because I'm done. I'm gonna hit stop on that thing. But that's what I did in under five minutes. And I will be honest, when I first edited this photo, I probably did about the same. I wasn't in a hurry, I was just hitting filters and I went through them. Started with um, New Sky, which is what I pretty, if I know I'm gonna put in a New Sky, I always do that first. And then I go back to the light tool and then follow through, kind of flow through the filters in that order. It is super easy and powerful. That's one of the things I love so much about Luminar 4. You can get a lot done in a short amount of time. So if you look at the sliding kind of before and after, now you may say, Jim, it's totally not believable. Hey, that's cool, man. We're friends. I don't mind. Uh, it's a judgment-free zone. I don't judge your photos. You don't judge mine. I'm just doing something because I wanted to do it. And I think that that's totally okay because this is art. And in the case of your photos, it's your art and you ought to do what you want. In the case of my photo here today, I'm doing what I want and I wanted to do this. And I think it looks cool. Is it believable? I don't know. And I got to be honest, my friends, I don't really care. I'm not trying to say, hey, look at this amazing storm I captured over this dramatic castle on a mountainside in southern Germany. Wow, you won't believe it. I'm not lying. I'm not sitting here telling stories. I'm having fun. And if you're not having fun, I think you're doing something wrong. So that's my workflow for today, my friends. There's the before, afternoon. I was just there and I didn't have time to be there when the light was better. So I took the shot. If you get the chance, you take the shot regardless, right? These days you have more tools that can help you turn a boring shot into something a bit more interesting and dramatic. I'm of the opinion that when you post this somewhere that you disclose that you put in a new sky, etc. cetera, um, some people may be able to tell the light's not exactly right and blah, 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 but whatever. I had fun doing it. That was my goal. And just to create something unique, different, interesting, and fun, and to do it in under five minutes. And I did it. Thanks for watching, my friends. Hope this gives you some ideas. And uh, I'm not always gonna try to hurry through my workflow videos, but sometimes it's kind of fun to A, make a shorter video, because some of my videos are 15, 17 minutes, and I know I lose you. Um, but also just to challenge myself to, hey, Jim, how well do you know the tools, and can you make something that you're proud of and that you like in five minutes or less? I did today. I don't always, but I did today. Thanks for watching, my friends. There it is, before and after. Have a good one, take care, and adios.